one thing you're going to get is a lot of history. And if I get too much, yeah. just say, you know, you're born. You have to come in your Okay? Promise? Um, last year when we had the uh, school violence um, shooting proposed in Clear Haven, uh, the governor, we were, that was when, that was in February, right? That was the middle of February. So we were pretty well along in putting together our capital budget, and the governor, of course, had already proposed his budget. And there wasn't anything in there for school safety. So the governor was proposing $4 million in the capital bill, a million dollars coming from the Department of Public Safety through their Homeland Security grants that they get from the federal government. And the goal of that was that um, the Department of Public Safety, along with the Agency of Education, in the interim, we'll be doing some assessments of all of our schools in the state in terms of what was needed for school uh, school safety. Uh, it could be cameras, locks on the doors, uh, maybe some um, change in maybe the lobby, and how it's laid out. It wasn't for personnel, it was for actual construction of something. Um, so, and then the Department of Public Safety, that $1 million was to be used for maybe any training or um, operational costs. Okay. So we did that. There was also an amendment that was put on on the floor by um, a member from Barry, uh, Topper. It's Topper's like the clock. Let's oh. um, so quickly you forget. Mm -hmm. Um, a little for a guy, would A little love for Tom. Yeah, yeah. And I mean that in a very good way. Yeah. And there was a school safety advisory group. That was it, right? Mm -hmm. That they were supposed to develop statewide guidelines and best practices concerning school safety and the prevention of school uh, shootings. And there was a list of people, that six folks, that would be on that. And what their powers and duties were. So that was added on after our bill hit the floor. So we put that on. Um, so the planning grants, the grants have already gone out. We put four million in our capital bill for this part, for this last year, and a million was to go to the Department of Public Safety. Department of Public Safety is the one that really handled both sets of money, basically. basically. And the app, what was put out was $25,000 per school, not per school district, but per building. <coughs> so that's the general history of it. And Becky's going to walk us through. And we have a gentleman sitting on the side. And I don't know. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I'm Andrew Brewer. I'm working with uh, Patty Conway. I'm working with Patty Conway. And, and you're representing what entity? It would be Gabby Giffords Association. That was the Gabby Giffords yes. Association. Yeah, thank you. And that's for prevention of that's the right. violent school fund. That's right. Okay. So, okay. Becky, it's all yours. Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council. Um, the chair walked through most of what I was going to no. <laughs> but I will add some more detail. Um, so there were two sections in uh, last year's capital budget adjustment bill um, that had to do with school safety. And uh, as was mentioned, there was the uh, school safety and security capital grant program, and then there was also the creation of a school security advisory group. Um, so, I've uh, cut and paste the language from both of those sections of the bill, and um, I also, in this document, added, um, there's a definition of schools that's used for the purposes of the grant program, so I included that definition in this, um, out, in this handout, and then finally, I, at the end, there um, which is only helpful on the uh, iPad, I included a link to the report that was submitted by the advisory group. So um, on the first page there, in section 26 of last year's capital bill, 
created the School Safety and Security Capital Grant Program. Um, that grant program is, is administered by the Department of Public Safety. And um, the purpose of it was to enhance safety and security in Vermont schools. And there's a cross-reference of a definition in there in Title 16, which I will get to uh, later on that I think is important for figuring out uh, who is eligible to receive these grants. And then um, there's a line about the amount appropriated in Section 10 of this Act, and that is the $4 million that was appropriated in last year's bill to support uh, this grant program. In subsection B, there is language on how the grant funds can be used. So uh, these are capital grants. Um, so they could be used for uh, planning, delivery, and installation of equipment. And that's for upgrades to existing school security equipment or for any new school security equipment that is needed um, by a school. And it, in order to determine if um, that is something that a school needs, there is, uh, there is a threat assessment planning and survey that was done by the Department of Public Safety to determine um, what would enhance building security. And there's some language about that later on um, on the next page. There are certain guidelines in subsection C about um, how these grants uh, can be used. So they are only, uh, the funds can only be used for capital eligible expenses. And there is a list there of some types of capital eligible expenses. This is not an exclusive list. So uh, it, it could include video monitoring and surveillance equipment, intercom systems, window coverings, exterior and interior doors, locks, and perimeter security measures. Um, as I mentioned above, there is a requirement for a security assessment that would be done in the schools in order to be eligible for these grants, and that security assessment um, had to be completed by the Agency of Education and the Department of Public Safety. In subdivision three, uh, there is uh, language limiting the amount of grant funds that a school is able to obtain through this program. So it is $25,000 per school. And there's also a 25% match requirement for the grant, and the school has to had to provide that match through dollars and not in-kind services. Um, the grants were are, are administered by the Department of Public Safety in coordination with the Agency of Education. And finally, in terms of reporting, the Department of Public Safety was required to provide notice of any awards granted under this section uh, to the chair of this committee and to the chair of Senate Committee on Institutions. There is also some sunset language included in the bill. So this uh, program is repealed on July 1st of this year. So for new members, you'll hear the term sunset used a lot. And sunset <coughs> means that means that as of that date, that particular law is, is repealed. Yeah. But the thinking behind putting in a sunset is that it's not a it's a definite repeal but it is not a definite repeal in that it triggers that word sunset triggers the legislators to say hey we've got to review this before we really do repeal it in case we don't want to repeal it so it's a check-in does that make sense no. yeah. <laughs> of course it does yes it does it's a check-in before <laughs> to make sure you don't want to repeal it or you do want to repeal it. So when you talk about, if you remember, public inebriates, when Mike Touchet was in, we talked about public inebriates being housed in correctional facilities, that we wanted to get rid of that practice. So we said as of a certain date, that is going to sunset that practice. And we have never found a way to do it any differently, so we keep extending that sunset date you remember Mike Touchet talking a little bit about that? That's what was that. So here we have, um, it's a repeal, 
but the title at the top is Sunset of School Security Grants, which means we don't know if this program is going to continue or not, and that will be up for discussion for the FY20, FY21 capital. <coughs> That makes sense, Kurt. Checking that question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I understand exactly what you're saying, but huh? it just kind of took rapidly starting to get to what you were saying. Took a long time to get there. How would you upset? Same one. So this is. So this is the one we're interested in. Yes, right. yes. Okay. on the third page, I've included uh, the, the definition of schools from 16 BSA 3447, which is used to um, determine which schools are eligible for these grants. And so uh, it references incorporated school districts, joint contract schools, town school districts, union school districts, regional career technical center school districts, and then independent schools. But as you will see, there is um, essentially a five part test that the independent school has to meet in order to be included on this list of schools. So um, the independent school has to be, well, it has to be an, an approved independent school um, it must meet educational quality standards, uh, which there's uh, section 166 of Title 16 lays those out those quality standards. Um, it must be a, a designated as a public high school for one or more towns or cities under um, section 827 of Title 16. It must receive principal support from public funds. And then it must be conducted within the state under the authority and supervision of a board of trustees, not less than two thirds of whose membership is appointed by the select board of a town or by the city council of the city or in part by such select board and the remaining part of such council under uh, conditions for that purpose set forth in uh, Title 16 um, in sections 3447 to 3456. So this is very specific. Um, I don't know the answer to how many schools actually qualify for this, um, the but I independent piece? just the independent piece. Um, I've had some discussions with our education attorney um, who doesn't know specifically either, but um, says it's a very small amount of schools that like a handful or less. Because you're really dealing more with the high school level, number one, and you're also dealing with particularly how it's financed locally, but how it's supported by public funds, and also uh, within the authority and supervision of the Board of Trustees, not less than two-thirds of whose membership is appointed by the select board of the town. So some independent schools that we think are independent schools may not have that structure with the local community. That's correct. So you have to dig in. So this mm -hmm. is this is an important part of this. If you also if you look at the three four four seven school building construction state bonds. For those of you who have been involved in school boards or maybe even select boards, we on the state level would help communities where there's school construction projects where there were eligible construction projects that were eligible for school construction dollars and we had a program that was the state would pick up 30 percent of those eligible costs and what determined that if the construction what would be eligible for state dollars would be th set through those school standards and it's done by, I believe it's done by the Board of Education. The rules, I'm not sure. But if a project eligible cost, the project was a million dollars and it was eligible for 30% state aid, school construction dollars, we would pick up 330000 that would be our share 
of that building. We were getting to the point about 10 years ago, 14 years ago, we had $100 million of obligation to our school districts. And we only appropriated at that time about 8 to $10 million per year of our capital budget for school construction. So we put a moratorium on that. The moratorium means that program is halted. It's not delayed, it is halted. So it gave us some breathing room to catch up on our obligations to our local school districts. So right now, that program is, is under the moratorium. And we have not done school construction dollars. Except for emergency Unless, projects? Just for emergency projects, that's 50000 a year. So this section, school building construction state bonds, is it refers to those school construction dollars in our capital. Is that, is that more, what form does that moratorium take? The it's form not. that it took, we put the language in the capital bill, oh. the form that it took is as of a certain date, we wanted to make sure that that town meeting vote that was going to occur that year happened. So I think it was after March, whatever, of that year, those projects that had been approved up to that date would be funded. Anything after that would not have any state aid. But the moratorium is in statute then? No, it's in session, session law. law and the there's also a requirement that in order for it to be lifted, um, a new funding system has to be put in place for school construction. But it doesn't apply to emergency projects, um, which Fifty thousand dollars has been included in the capital bill every year in for that purpose. Emergency projects, we want to like life and safety issues. Mm -hmm. Does that apply to the drinking water issues? Was that used at all? Okay. What was it? Was that a yes or a no? No. Okay. Those there's a lot of knocking on the door for school construction. <laughs> a lot of knocking on the door, mm -hmm. particularly for the consolidation issue. It could be for the drink and the lead issue. It could be for the radar issue. Lots of knocking on the door. So we're going to be dealing with school construction dollars somewhere. So, 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 in addition to Alice's approval, which is very good, thank you. Uh, the reason that this language is very important and the reason I pulled the Green Book out is the committee last year wanted to make sure that we included independent schools that independent schools would be eligible for these grants. Uh, a member from St. John's Ferry uh, and a member from Manchester. They have uh, academies. Yeah. Academies. Academies. They, have they have St. John's, John's Ferry Academy, Burbank, uh, and there's other schools like the Monk Hill School down your way. Uh, we want to make sure those schools will be eligible for grant. Uh, and it's fun, funny because we all open up the statute book and there's Alice's underlining under the language. Last <laughs> <laughs> year. And I, uh, so, the Department of Public Safety actually mirrored that language in their grant application. They didn't fund any public school, any independent schools at all, uh, according to what little bit of research I did uh, on uh, on the subject. Uh, I think so it, I personally think we missed a group of schools that we we, we had it. I think the committee intent was to cover those schools. Am I speak, speaking out of turn? No, no, I was. So the question comes to me is, um, do we rectify this after, you know, let's say after we get the government's budget, or, or do we not? Uh, there was a head of, head of a, a, a public independent school in Lunch City uh, that actually brought it to my attention that they were summarily told by Department of Public Safety and the Agency of Ed that they were not eligible. For, for these grant funds. So can I just interrupt? Yeah. Were those independent schools part of the survey that was done with the department? They were public? surveyed. They were surveyed. Mm -hmm. This this school that contacted me was surveyed. Now, it I was surveyed, about, but you don't know about St. I don't Jones. know about CJ or Burma, but we can find out. So that's why this language, I think, that he brings us forward, thankfully, uh, for discussion on this. Uh, like. Particularly St. Jay or Burnham, they're, they're 
basically public high schools. They are public high schools. The other piece of this that, that Al just pointed out uh, to me, the language, further language that you don't see there is uh, the kind of the definition of independent schools, and they don't talk about uh, public elementary uh, independent no. elementary schools. Just high schools. Just high schools. So that's right. a, that would be another glitch that the statute really needs to be maybe repaired and fixed on that. Uh, that's a discussion for another day, I suppose. That's your school construction. Right. Right. So if, if you're going to, you could just create a new definition that you want to use. Specifically um, for school safety? For school safety, okay. because this was... I think um, the idea was that this was another example of where public funds were being given to schools, so it was the reference point to use, but obviously it didn't encompass um, the right. intent. But I guess we, just, yeah. we had a very long committee discussion about the independent schools and whether we wanted to include them in the grant program or not, and the committee agreed uh, that we did. Uh, I guess, guess we missed the target. Right. I, I, if you if you um, amend this section of law, uh, that would also just be getting into the policy decision of school that. construction. So, you know, you could you could do that, um, but it would be expanding what the if the moratorium was lifted, it would be ex also expanding what schools were eligible to receive school construction. Well, then you'll have an amendment on the floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So I hear you say that if we're going to do this, it should be school safety specific. That's up to the committee. I just That's just a consideration that if you're going to amend this section of law for the school safety program, it would also have implications for the school construction okay. program. We don't want to open up we don't that want to. So there's another avenue we can take. The, and the that's question right. then is, if we could find out how many number of schools we're really talking about. How many buildings do we really talk about? Yeah. Because all the money on our four million has been used. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to get a list of where those dollars went. We could get a list of mm -hmm. the language required the department to send that to you. The governor issued the report. Yeah, the governor issued the report. Oh where the money went. Okay. I, have it. I, I remember seeing it. But it would be good for the committee members. Yeah, I'll get it to Danielle. Uh, okay, Danielle. Do you know how many schools applied, um, and then how many were denied? That's part I, of the report. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer okay. to that. Um, it came from the administration. Is that a public report? Yes. Yes, okay. yes it was posted. Yeah. When it was posted. Okay. I, I just wonder if it's on it our. It was sometime in the fall. It, perhaps it's on our. Um, yeah, it was before the election. Yeah. Uh, well, it was actually a press release. Governor's yeah, announced we, the school safety. Yeah, yeah but yes. we got it. I remember getting it. Yeah, we got it. He's email to us. Yeah, yeah I remember getting it. So I can print them out. I can get that for you. So, one issue with the school safety. A lot, there's probably three issues here. This is the first issue. It doesn't look like it's on. How do we define independent school? And was that really our intent? And if it was our intent, then the four million did not go to any independent schools. So then that means if we want to do that, then we'll have to see if we want to put money in this year's capital bill for that. And then that would be sort of specific to just independent schools and not open up the door to other schools. That would be a policy decision we'd have to make. But we'd have to make a decision if we put any money in. Oh, there you go. Because the governor may, in his budget, put money in it, and he may not. If he doesn't, we can, if we so choose. Um, the other issue is how much of the one million from the public safety went in. Um, and oh, there's another, there's four issues. Another issue is later on in the legislation, a 
I said, there was a floor amendment to the School Safety Advisory Group, which I have heard did not meet, did not do anything. There, and, there is a report. Yeah, but it wasn't from that group. Oh, School Safety Advisory Group. Was there a report? Yeah, it was just um, later. The, the language required it, I think, to be done by July, and this is dated. We heard from Topper that they didn't do what they needed to do, so we'll have to check. Okay. And then the fourth issue is Fairhaven. Mm -hmm. Fairhaven is where the initial threat was made. Um, they went ahead and did some improvements that would have qualified for that form. Did they file? Did they, they filed and were told uh, they, they were But told. were they assessed when they went through the assessment? Or were, they yes, they were, they were assessed, but they had already, already done the work uh, They'd already due to public pressure. On their own nickel. So they're saying, hey, we should have qualified retroactively for this 25000 so that's an issue that's circulating around right now yes. that we may have to address in the FY20 capital budget or the FY20 general fund budget. We don't know. Yeah, that's going to be handled as the weeks and months and, and There's one more issue that we need to... I got four already. Well, I got two five. We don't need any more issues. Okay. Uh, I have the list of what they were uh, giving. Uh, grants for, and many of the items they were giving grants for, in my, in my opinion, of our four million, of our four million, were not capital eligible. We'll learn about that so probably from the treasurer on uh, when, when she comes in about what what cap what capital dollars can be expended for, and that's a whole definitional thing. A lot of stuff within their grant application that they were looking to pay for. As an example of uh, they called the gold bag, which had stuff in it uh, in case of emergency, those types of things. Can you stick? Yeah, it looked like Fairhaven was actually on this list. Mm -hmm. Yes, they got nine hundred and twenty-seven dollars. Nine fifty-nine. Nine fifty-nine. Mm -hmm. They were. And how much did they expend? Oh, they really pushed. Well, that's uh, we'll get into that. Yeah. We'll, so, so it looks like there were 236 schools that were awarded yeah. grants. Yeah, so, could you forward that to Danielle so Danielle can then post that on our web page? Sure. That would be great. Also, have a uh, letter from Kendall to me and you about <coughs> So, we'll be spending some time on, on this independent school. And on the fair haven thing. Right. So they considered that the report? Of the school that safety advisory yeah. group? Yeah. That's uh, the title of it. Yeah, it there it looks like it has But the thing is, we this is where oops, this is where it gets really complicated. In that we have passed out our budget. Trying to, I'm putting the pieces together. We we passed out the capital budget in a March, and we had the assessment, security assessment, was to be completed by the agency of Ed, Department of Public Safety, by those folks that are focused on security within. Our bill had not passed yet. yet. I don't believe it. Had it gone on to the Senate when the gun bill came out? I don't remember. Either way, we still had it. So then the gun legislation came out on the floor. You know, the background checks, the waiting period, box stocks, high capacity magazines. And Topper had an amendment on the floor. Some folks had an amendment on the floor. That that gun safety bill in legislation was not going to be protecting our schools. <coughs> that was not going to. So Topper had an amendment 
that put in place the school safety advisor which basically would do the same thing that we'd already put in the bill the agency of education mm -hmm. and the public safety but there was some legislators and particularly Tarver that really wanted the school safety advisory group to develop statewide guidelines and best practices concerning school safety and the prevention of school shooting. So it went a little further than just a security assessment. And there was a membership of the Secretary of the Administration, the Secretary of Education, Commissioner of Public Safety, and Executive Director of the School Boards Association and the NDA. Uh, and a representative from the Principals Association. And then they were to re uh, study the issues and the guidelines for schools. So that was starting to really bog down all the discussions on the floor. We had this security assessment on our capital bill, which was kind of at the same time. So we made an agreement that we would pick this up, put this language in the capital. And that's what why it's here so it's sort of as the same as the security assessment that we already had with the secretary uh, with the agency of education and the department of public safety but it went a little further in terms of setting up guidelines so last week first week of the session topper came to me and he said that this advisory group didn't do their work and never met so i don't know if that's true or not um, so there, the advisory group um, under the language was supposed to submit a written report by July 1st of, of last year and as you saw and, and the group ceases to exist on July 1st of this year um, but as you saw that that was dated December 20th so I don't know if um, from the school safety advisors. Right. I don't know if there was, um, it, it, it was more an issue of they met later than the law required. Right. So the school safety advisory group found many of the resources, best practices, and guidelines for school safety throughout Vermont were well established. So in conclusion, they made several policy and best practice recommendations for continued improvement of school safety in Vermont schools. So then they attach report. You can stay where you are. Then. Oh, sure. So uh, the attached report includes resources developed by, okay, so Vermont School Crisis Planning Team and the Vermont School Safety Center. So I'm a, I, I would think that's, okay, the School Safety Center is supported by partnership between the Department of Public Safety and Agency of Ed. So that's the connection that we had was the Agency of Ed and the Department of Public Safety um, for the, and they considered that the school safety center. So they're, they're merging those two, and they're merging what we had, Agency of Ed, Department of Public Safety, they're merging that with the uh, advisory group that was added on to our field. They're merging those two, that was my thing. So, uh, Tarper is saying they didn't do what they needed to do, but maybe they did in a different, different arena. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, questions? Confusion? No, I was just looking for the recommendation section of the report. It's, <laughs> it's 258 pages long. Yeah, huh? that's the drawback of the one. Is it that long? Where did they post no, that? Like you can see one of two. Oh, yeah. So what page did you find those, Becky? In, oh, what page did I find? A recommendation that says... It was separately. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can... Was that a separate... That that was on this report. No, it was a report. It was a separate... This, this is just the cover sheet for the report. Right. Um, the report. I know, but... But the report that you just sent to Danielle? Oh, no, I just I just Googled. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's separate. That's just the grant awards. Is that that's the list you? Yeah, um, yeah. I want to yeah. that grant award. 
there. Because I want to see. Okay, if we can get, where did that? If you went to the previous page for that. Um, that is under the emergency management. Emergency management, yeah. And where did you get the report? The report is on emergency. our our the legislative website under reports and research, but in the. Um, in the handout that I included, if you go to the last page, I, I oh. included a link that should work. Yeah, so you can find it there too. Okay. But that's a school safety advisory. That's a school safety advisory. I didn't include um, the list of awarded grants. So the school safety advisory is on where the grant money went. That was a separate report. That, was, that sounds like something that the um, administration produced um, that wasn't required under the legislation. What was required under the legislation was um, the Department of Public Safety providing notice to the two institutions' committees of um, any grants awarded. And that will be yeah. what was presented there. When was the advisory group? When was the date on that again? December? December 20th. So they did the work, but they didn't do it for July 1st. Um, right, and, and perhaps it sounds like they, the as you were saying, the resources and the best practices that they attached were um, developed in another context and they adopted those as their best practices. <coughs> but, um, yeah. but they did what they did, and did they achieve the same results? Right, as long as they did it. It's just a different time frame. They didn't want to do it at all. There was a bit of a dust up. <laughs> so if you do want to consider if other schools um, should have been eligible, you, you would have to change that sunset date. Right, if we do the independent schools. If you wanted to give them more time to apply and um, have the grant program last okay. for a longer period of time, you would have to push out that, that sunset date. And in addition, if you wanted this advisory group to do any further work that mm -hmm. is um, ceasing to exist on July 1st of this year as well, so you would have to um, push back that date too. Which date? The Sunset Advisory Group yeah. that is um, terminating on July 1st of this year. It sounds like they didn't do anything to begin with. <laughs> So we've got a lot of issues here swirling around this little school construction thing. I'm just sort of writing down because it's more than three or four. So we yeah. don't forget. Then school safety, not construction. How would I say school construction? <laughs> I know. How <laughs> <laughs> <Hush, laughs> <man. laughs> <laughs> 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 So let me go through the list real quick. Somebody can also keep track of this because we'll have to do so if I was all just it's just more so we need to really clarify the independent school issue mm -hmm. and do a separate definition possible uh, we need to uh, look at the current four million dollars in terms of the boiler projects appropriate for bonded dollars and where the one million dollars went for public safety we have to address the fair haven 
issue of retroactivity. What am I missing? Sunset. The advisory group in what way? We need it. Do we have to look at that because it's sunsetting? It would have wanted to go forward. If you do nothing, it just won't exist anymore. Right. So you yeah. would have to do something this legislative session in order to have right. it continue. So when you say sunset, Butch, you're talking sunset of the school safety program. Yes. Part of why there was that assessment done from the agency of that in the Department of Public Safety. And the demand right now is the retroactivity for Fairhaven and the independent schools. That's the demand right now. Yep. Right? Yep. And the independent schools, from our understanding, they were assessed by the Department of Public Safety and Agency of Health. And when the Department of Public Safety put out those grant applications, it did include a language in our calendar bill, I mean, well, the language that we put in, in terms of school construction, that it did include independent <coughs> schools. But none of the independent schools received any grants school safety though they were assessed for their security. And we need to find out where that one million public safety going to. That will be an important case. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Mary. So anything else, Becky? That's all I had. So are people really confused or are you sort of clear? I know it's overwhelming. The thing is from the capital budget and institutions committee, you deal with every part of state government in different ways. You will be exposed to a lot more things in this country than being like the natural resources or education or agriculture where they will at those specific areas only, but when you're dealing with a capital bill and um, you're dealing with, you're going to get into wastewater treatment facilities, you're going to get into sewer overflows, you're going to get into the school construction piece, you're going to get into armories, you're going to get into uh, Department of Public Safety in terms of the State police barracks. They're going to get into courthouses. They're going to get into art and state buildings. What am I missing? So you're going to touch everything. You're going to get into maybe the auditor wanting a new building, a new space. I had a question around the intention of the sunsetting, um, yes. and I'm wondering. I was wondering. If it had any had anything to do with what's going on with the mergers, was July because July first was the no. date that was set. So no. it's, it doesn't have anything. No. So it was done as a way. This came in as a result of the situation in Fairhaven, mm -hmm. and really feeling that our schools needed support, <clears throat> and we quickly put this together. Quickly found four million dollars in our budget, and an additional one million. We didn't know what the needs were, were going to be. We didn't know what the response was going to be. We didn't know if the four, four million, the one, one, five million was going to take care of it or not. And that's why we put in that sunset to say, look at this come next session to see where we are. If it needs another year or two, or if everything is complete. 
And July 1st is usually picked because that's the start of the next fiscal year. Yeah, I want it. Thank you. So we'll be doing a lot more shooting in this. But this is the first cursory look. It's my understanding of what we did. Anything else, Becky? Huh? Are you planning on staying for the next little section? I am. Yeah. You might need some help. I don't know. It's moving. Okay. From lease space to other lease space. Feed for space. Waterbury. You were here for uh, the end of it, yeah. Or I guess the beginning, I don't know. A year into it. And National Life, where we put in $6 million for renovations at National Life. Hmm? That was a big dust up. That was a big dust up, because we were putting in state money into a building we didn't own. Why is much money? Now we're going to pull people out. And we didn't. Well, we do about two million. Of oh, the six. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, it was three million. Was it two million? We knew we were going to get a party. Six million. But I'll say, Chris did notify both Peggy and me about, it must have been that, I don't remember. So about possibly moving. AOT, part of AOT out of <laughs> National Life and Women and Agency up there. And I voiced to him my concern right down there. I said, hey, we kept the AR and AOT together purposely. Now you move. <laughs> okay, anything else? People want to take a quick break?